In part A, we are asked to determine the maximum distance that the block moves from its initial position. Now, the block carries a positive charge in the amount of capital Q, and it's placed in an electric field. We know that when positive charge is placed in an electric field that points to the right, then an electric force will push the positive charge in the same direction to the right. So what happens is this positively charged block has an electric force pushing it to the right until it comes to rest and stretches the spring out to some maximum distance. We've drawn the box as it has moved out to that maximum distance, and we have labeled x, the position of the box, as x max. And that's actually what we're looking for in part A, the maximum distance. And it turns out we can use the conservation of energy to determine the value of x max. We've written the conservation of energy down below. We have the sum, excuse me, we have the change in the kinetic energy plus the change in the elastic potential energy, this is from the spring, plus the change in the electrical potential energy, and all of that equals zero according to the conservation of energy. Let's examine each one of these changes in energies separately. So the change in kinetic energy, of course, is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Now we know that kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, so we can re-express this as 1 half mass times final velocity squared minus 1 half mass times initial velocity squared. If we go back up to the given information, we know that the block is released from rest, so of course that means its initial velocity is zero. And then the block, as we said, will be pushed out to the right, but once it reaches that maximum position, the final velocity will also be zero because the block will come to rest as it stretches the spring out. So because both the final and initial velocities are zero, the change in kinetic energy will equal zero as well. So this we can eliminate from the equation. Let's next examine the change in the spring potential energy, sometimes called the elastic potential energy. So of course that's going to be the spring potential energy final minus the spring potential energy initial. The spring potential energy is expressed as 1 half k times x squared. So for the final potential energy we will say x final squared. And then a similar expression for the initial. We will label x with an initial squared. So this would be the change in the potential energy of the spring. Now again, going back to the picture, remember that initially the x value is zero. So we could say that x initial is zero. That just means that the spring is unstretched at that point. And then the final x value would be the maximum distance that the spring is stretched. So that would be x max. So again, x initial is zero and x final is equal to x max. So because the initial x is zero, this is going to drop out, and then the final x will be the x max value. So we'll express this as 1 half k times x max squared. So this is what we're going to insert into our conservation of energy equation for the change in spring potential energy. Now, of course, we will also need an expression for the change in electric potential energy. We learn in this chapter that the change in electric potential energy is equal to negative the amount of charge on the object times the x component of the electric field times the displacement along the x-axis of the charged object. So let's go ahead and substitute this expression right here in for the change in electric potential energy. Let's notice a couple of things here. Adding a negative, of course, is equivalent to subtraction. So we can actually rewrite this as a subtraction quantity. And then delta x, we know delta x is equal to the final x position minus the initial x position. Recall the initial x position was zero. If you go back and look at the diagram, we stated that earlier. The final x position, again, was x max. So if we substitute x max for x final, then we have an expression for delta x. So this delta x right here, we will replace with x max. Now, let's begin the process of solving for x max, which is what part A requests. We'll actually divide each term here by x max 
Technically, we have to do that on the right-hand side as well. So the x max here will cancel. The right-hand side will remain 0. And then the left-hand side will become 1 half times k times just x max. It will no longer be x max squared because we divided out one of the factors. And then we have minus q times ex, which we will eventually be able to plug in for. Now remember, we're solving for x max. Let's add the q ex to the other side. So we'll do this maneuver right here. So now we have 1 half k x max equals q times e x. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So then the 1 half would cancel out. And then finally, divide both sides by k. So this will give you the expression for x max. And now all we need to do is plug in the known values of these quantities. Now, the charge Q was given to be 35 microcoulombs. So that's microcoulombs. That means we'll have to do 35 times 10 to the minus 6. That will get it into coulombs. Oh, let's also not forget the 2 that was in front. Multiplied by the electric field strength. And the electric field strength here was 4.86 times 10 to the 4th. And that was in newtons per coulomb. And then finally, we'll divide by the value of k, the spring constant. And that was given to us in the question as well. It was 78 newtons per meter. So let's pick up our calculators and crunch this down. And when you do so, you should get about 0 0.0436. And then this will come out into meters. You look carefully, the coulombs will cancel these newtons will cancel, and then the meters divides up to the numerator. So this would be the correct answer for part A. If you need it in centimeters, then just multiply by 100, and you'll have 4.36 centimeters. So either one of those is an equivalently correct answer. Now to part B of the question. Part B wants us to find the subsequent equilibrium position of the block and the amplitude of its motion. So what's going to happen is the block is going to start to bounce back and forth on this spring. And they want us to determine the equilibrium position of the block. And it turns out that we can use the following approach. We draw a free body diagram showing the forces acting horizontally on the block. Now at equilibrium, what that means is that the magnitude of these forces would be equal. So we could say that the magnitude of the electric force is equal to the magnitude of the spring force. That's the definition of equilibrium. Now, the electric force, we perhaps recall, is equal to the amount of charge times the electric field strength. And then the spring force is equal to k times x. So we're going to solve this equation for x and divide both sides of it by the spring constant k. So now we can see that x, the equilibrium position, will be q times e divided by k. And of course, we have all of those values. So q was 35 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. The electric field strength was 4.86 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. And then k was 78 newtons per coulomb. And when you divide this out, you will see that the equilibrium position is 0 0.0218. Again, that comes out in meters. We could label this x equilibrium in centimeters form, multiply by 100, and you get 2.18 centimeters as the equilibrium position. So just to reiterate what's going on here, basically you had the initial position from the beginning of the problem as 0. Then we knew the block was st uh, stretching the spring all the way out to this final position, which we called x max, and we found that to be 4.36 centimeters. And then we said it's going to bounce back and forth, kind of like this way and then that way, back and forth. And the equilibrium position that we just calculated was right here. This was x equilibrium. It's halfway between the two points, actually. It's 2.18 centimeters. Also in part B, we needed the amplitude of the motion. We can actually get a sense of the amplitude by this wonderful diagram here. We know that the amplitude would be the distance from the equilibrium position to the maximum position. That's your amplitude right there. Hopefully we can see that that amplitude would just be 4.36 centimeters minus the 2.1 
centimeters, which of course comes out to 2.18 centimeters. So this is the amplitude, and then again, the equilibrium position was this value. Finally, on to part C of this question. We go back up. It says, using conservation of energy, find a symbolic relationship giving the potential difference. Potential difference is symbolized by delta V between the initial position and the point of maximum extension. Now, we actually used energy conservation in part A of the question, so this is quite similar to what we did then. Here is that equation that we developed for the conservation of energy. We claimed that the change in kinetic energy was zero, and that still holds for this problem as well. We also determined that the change in potential energy of the spring was represented by one half k x max squared, so that's still true. But then, for the change in potential energy, we're going to use a different expression than the one that we used in part A. We've learned in this chapter that the, the electric potential difference is equal to the change in potential energy divided by the charge. Now this is very useful to us because it incorporates delta V, which is what we want in part C. Remember, this potential energy is the electric potential energy. Let's multiply both sides of this equation by Q, and then we can see that the change in potential energy, electric potential energy, is Q delta V. So what we'll do is come over here and we will substitute Q delta V in for the change in the electric potential energy. In fact, I think the Q was supposed to be uppercase Q indeed. So let's actually use an uppercase Q to satisfy the conditions of the question. And what we will simply do is solve this for delta V. Why don't we make a little bit of room here? And what we could do first is multiply each term by 2. So if we multiply this by 2, this term by 2, and this term by 2, then the 1 half cancels, and we have kx max squared plus 2 capital Q delta V equals 0. Subtract kx max squared to the other side. and then divide by 2q. So they cancel out there. And now the only challenge here is that we have to express our answer in terms of a, not in terms of x max. So maybe going back to this picture again, we can see that the x max was the distance from 0 all the way over to here. That's our x max in red there. But we can hopefully see that that distance is actually twice the amplitude. So if you took this amplitude and then added it to that amplitude, you would indeed get the x max. So what we're saying here is that x max is equal to 2a. So all we need to do is replace the x max we developed earlier with 2a. It still is squared. If we square the 2a in the numerator, we're going to get 4a squared. So this will become negative 4ka squared over 2q. And then 4 divided by 2, of course, is 2. So this becomes just a 1. That becomes a 2. We are left with our final answer for the potential difference, negative 2ka squared all divided by q.